Okay, now I'm calling the meeting to order at 401, seeing a quorum. Um, we are meeting virtually pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. I'm gonna ask each of you to register your presence vocally so we know that you can hear and be heard. Um, Austin? I'm, I'm present. Great, Alex? Here. And Alex Lefebvre, I'm present as well. Um, so Austin has something at five, which means we'll lose our quorum. So I'm gonna try and keep us on a timeline. And we have uh, Craig DiCarlo from Colliers, our OPM here as well. And since Angela is gonna be taking meeting minutes, I'm just gonna record that we have six uh, members of the public in our audience. So she can record that for the meeting minutes. Um, so the second thing on our agenda is approval of the minutes of April 5th, 2022. Is there a motion? I move to approve. And a second? So seconded. <laughs> Thanks. Um, any comments or changes to the meeting minutes? I saw one thing on the first page when it referred to the historic tax credits, it said that it was gonna be guiding the exterior and I believe that should be, it should be guiding the interior. So just that one small amendment. Uh, so if that works for everybody, I'll take a vote to approve uh, the minutes uh, with that small amendment. Uh, Austin? Uh, approve. Great, Alex? Yes. Okay, and Alex Lefebvre also approve. Um, the third item on our agenda is the May 1 event. So I wanna start off by thanking all of the volunteers that we had, the library staff and the community. We had about 75 people who were in attendance of the event. We collected roughly 216 unique comments and over 400 comments. So meaning that 216 unique, but you had people who were boosting comments of other people. So there were about 400 comments in total that we received. There was a draft of the comments in the packet. That was me typing it up. So be kind if you see typos, I will fix them. That was just a, a quick um, first pass. Um, the comments were also put into a visual format that sort of looks like the multicolored stickies and they were put up the next day in the library so that we could continue to receive comments from people or boost comments from other people. Um, and one of the advantages of living next to the library is I've just been going every day and taking a picture so that I can add as, as we get additional comments. Um, so I guess I just wanted to check in with folks uh, about you know thoughts, comments, feedback on the event, uh, generally speaking. I thought it was really great. Um, you know, I think the my my big contribution to the vision was that I wanted to see blank paper turn into paper with comments, and uh, that very much happened. Um, I want to just give a special shout out to uh, the team section and also um, the big ideas. I think both of those had some really vibrant uh, conversations. Um, and it was really lovely to see such a wide snapshot of folks. Um, and I look forward to figuring out how do we continue to uh, diversify not only who we are getting comments from, but how we are going out to, to get those um, or get that input as well. Great, thanks Alex. And I thought it was a great event. Um, it galvanized, I think, good good conversation. There was a lot of energy when I was there. Uh, the comments are really interesting to read. And uh, I think really most of all want to say bravo to Alex uh, Lefebvre who uh, really spearheaded this, uh, this first outreach event. So thank you, Alex, for all of that, uh, all of that work. Thanks. I, I would be remiss not to point out that Anika did a ton of work as well and a lot of the brainstorming around this. So um, she's not here, but shout out to Anika for all her incredible ideas and work that she did. Um, we don't have public comment to the end, but I do see people in our um, participants who either attended or volunteered at the event. And I would love to invite folks in um, if they are interested to raise their hands. Um, I say this being in control, I'm not entirely knowing what I'm doing, but I will give it a whirl. Um, 
if you want to share any feedback, thoughts, comments about the event or just any, any feedback at all, just go ahead and raise your hand and I will endeavor to figure out how to bring you into the meeting. Okay, so either everybody's being really kind because they know I don't know how to bring them in the meeting. <laughs> I will figure it out if you, if you do raise your hand, so. Okay, um, so the next thing with the May 1 event um, is capturing the public comment so that we can then feed it on to uh, the design subcommittee and the larger Jones Library building committee. And so Craig was really great about putting together some ideas about how we could do that. Um, and I did create a spreadsheet based on his feedback, which I can share and then I would just encourage uh, folks if we want to ask questions uh, or let Craig explain his thinking um, and then we can talk a little bit about you know do, do we like this format do we want to change anything um, if that works yes yeah, so sorry, I, I locked my computer down at one point so that nothing can share. So I'm gonna let Craig talk about his ideas while I unlock my computer and, <laughs> and I'm able to share my screen. Uh, certainly, Alex. So I think the big idea is that we've got information coming in both from the May 1st event as well as this rolling process of collecting. And so, um, my recommendation, and you did a, a fantastic job turning my recommendations into an actual document. So nice, nice work, Alex. My recommendation is that each comment be assigned a number, given, uh, you know, record the date it was made. Um, if there are multiple comments that are very, very similar, recording how many, you know, the frequency in which that comment was made, and then, uh, or if it was boosted, recording how many times it was boosted, and then keeping it all as a, as a living document that um, can be shared with the different, with, with the design subcommittee and um, library building committee. Um, and then also used as kind of a tracking device so that as the comments flow through those decision-making bodies, um, they, it can be recorded that it was discussed at such and such a meeting and you know, this, was, this was the outcome. So that it brings that whole process full circle. And also, as I said, you know, being a living document as more stuff comes in, that will also make its way through the process. So that's the big idea. Great. Thank you. Um, Austin or Alex, do you guys have any questions? Austin. Thank you, Alex. Craig, it would be helpful uh, for you just to remind us in other projects in which you've worked on how uh, such a compilation of public comments has informed uh, deliberations. So the numbers associated with each of these comments, none of them are great. But there seems to be more of them focused on the teen area than most of the others. Uh, so could you just talk a little bit about your experience in terms of how these comments um, inform, the, in, inform the process? Certainly. Um, so in my previous experience on other pro other public projects, including uh, public schools, uh, the, this process has been a little less formal or more of a uh, one-time opportunity or two-time opportunities, such as there'd be a, a large public meeting. Uh, during that, there'd be a short presentation, and then sort of questions and answers. And and then the the design team and the and the um, the building committees and subcommittees, we just kind of take the general zeitgeist uh, or the general feel and consider that when they were moving through the design process. So, but what I've heard um, in my involvement in this project is that there, there seems to be a desire to hear more discreetly from the public exactly what they're interested in, exactly what they value. And so this, this process here is a little more formalized. And so I think, um, the way that it's it's informing the design process will also be a little, you know, warrants it being a little more formal. Does that answer your question, Austin? Sort of. Um, it, the, it, when you say warrants it being a little more formal. So let me give you some examples. So there are 10 comments on Alex's spreadsheet 
about the positioning of the Burnett Gallery. There are many comments about the furnishing of the teen room. Uh, they, you know, they want beanbag chairs, they want... So uh, I'm just trying to get a sense that might be helpful and it certainly might be helpful to the design committee about how do I regard, how should I regard those comments? I mean, there are some of them that are what I would call new ideas to me. Didn't think about that. And they're useful in that way. New ideas, new perspectives, didn't think about that. But there are others of them um, that uh, maybe are not new ideas, but the numbers are small. So when you say more formal at the end, they should be dealt with in a more formal way. I, I want to just get a little meat on those bones. What does that mean? How do we? Do you want me to pull up the spreadsheet, Craig? And then you can, I can, is that sure. helpful or not? Okay. Uh, yes, I think that would be helpful. Okay. I'll, I'll move as you tell me you want me to move. <laughs> Fantastic. So the, uh, the, the view you've got right now is perfect. So um, Austin, to elaborate on my response before uh, or my comments before. So in, in the past on other projects, we haven't, um, the, the community has not gone through uh, this detailed list. Um, rather it was um, more if a couple people, different individuals who happened to attend a public meeting made uh, a comment or a series of comments that were similar, that would you know, register in everyone's mind, the design team and the uh, building committee. Um, here where the collection of information is more you know, tailored to the, to the remote or asynchronous, um, the only fair way or reasonable way that I can see to collect it all, so sort of weight everything the same, have all that as raw information and then that raw information be processed in some way. And I don't know exactly the best way to process that, but what I'm kind of thinking would be um, either uh, someone from the design subcommittee or the design subcommittee itself would quickly go through all of these um, and start drawing out uh, common themes. Um, so once those common themes are identified, then they can really be discussed uh, in depth um, and then a, you know, uh, a response could be generated. Um, and then I was sort of envisioning maybe, you know, since that's the case, maybe a response to each one of these would, would, um, and Alex, if you just scroll down, um, to just give people a feel for the, 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 the volume of comments. So there are a lot of comments, as Alex was saying, uh, 216 something unique ones. Uh, but you can see they, they fit into these categories um, in general, you know, interior, exterior, historic considerations, sustainable considerations, programs at the library. So maybe the design team can take those, you know, one category at a time, talk about what they see, um, and then develop a plan based on, based on that along with all the other considerations that go into a project, such as, you know, uh, the, the feasibility of various ideas, uh, budgetary considerations, um, things like that. Alex, you have your hand up. Thanks. Yeah, uh, that's all really useful. I think um, a lot of what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, Austin, but I think this goes back to something you brought up in one of our earliest meetings of like, what is the purview or uh, the charge of this subcommittee? And um, it sounds like, I mean, at this point, we have the raw data. Um, I, I hear the, uh, the a pathway forwards for us to present that raw data in a format that demonstrates the frequency with which an idea comes up. Um, but it sounds like there is some clarification work to be done by the larger library committee on OK, out move forwards, beanbag chairs particularly. And so we have to figure out is that, is what is that process and does it start 
with us does that start in the design committee um and so i might want to just push that back to the larger group next tuesday to get some clarity great thanks um i see that somebody in the audience has their hand up um if folks are amenable i'm gonna go ahead and bring them into the meeting to um Okay, Chris, did I do it? Chris will be joining the webinar. Hey, I did it. Chris, you're on. You just need to unmute yourself. Um, hi, Chris Riddle. Um, I was not at the event, and um, I wish I had been. Um, my basic question is the, the danger of an event like this, the political danger of the event like this. Uh, people, a large number of people make earnest suggestions. Um, some of them you can accommodate, some of them you can't. I'm sure you must have thought about this issue. How was it presented? And uh, to what extent do we have to worry about, uh, oh, I went to that meeting and, uh, and I gave my suggestions and made it, nothing ever happened. It just went off into the ether. So I presume you have a strategy to deal with that dynamic. I'd like to uh, I'd like to know what it is. Thank you. Thanks. Um, does anybody want to want to respond to that, or do you, do you want me to respond to that? I want Craig to respond to that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, okay. I was going to say I, I'm more than happy to take a. A quick shot in that. Um, I'm going to speak for myself personally. Uh, the, you know, I think when we were first discussing this event, um, I know that personally I, I was definitely pushing for this to be as broad uh, an audience as possible, and we'll continue to do that, right? Um, and I, I think that there's been a lot of shared sentiment on making sure that as many people can participate as possible. That being said, um, there also has been a lot of work by colleagues and I really appreciate the work that's been done there, um, but also by the larger library committee to continue to try and understand where and when public uh, input is most effective and on what is it is most effective. And so I know, for example, at the event, um, there was one person who it was a little disheartened that uh, honestly the referendum vote had not gone the way that they had wanted. And so I was able to actually pull up the timeline and thank you for providing that um, and show them like, here's when decisions are being made. Here's where public input is happening. Here's where we are today. And they went off and added comments to a couple of boards um, as far as I know. And so I hear that and I think, uh, to answer you know what the strategy would be around that is partially like and i'm speaking for myself personally um is not to see each other as dangerous in this moment but to see each other as collaborators who can bring together a better possibility if we are honest about where we're at and what are the parameters that we face um given the nature of the grants the process etc Thanks, Alex. Yeah, and I, I would just add to that, being the one who typed up all the comments, that I actually, nothing really gave me pause. I mean, I really appreciate it. There was a lot of, um, there were a lot of comments that really echoed what, what the library saw back in 2016, um, when the public was initially, uh, you know, engaged in sort of that large uh, commentary. Um, and I thought there were some really neat ideas that um, aren't, revolutionary per se and I think you know could very much be part of the building design and I think I also see this as a collaborative in terms of uh you know I I'm I don't think we've ever represented that the public is going to say x and we're going to do x I think it's been that you know we want to it's a check-in it's a check-in with the public on where we are today in 2022 2022 post-pandemic about community needs around the library and so I, I personally found the comments to be uh, really great and really exciting and really affirming of a lot of the things that are already happening. Many of the 
many of the things that are on the dream board. I'm like, oh, that's going to happen already. So um, I, I thought it was great. Um, and I think there were some suggestions in there. Um, you know, there were some suggestions around universal de design and the architects may already be thinking about these things. You know, somebody was talking about, you know, adapting things for people who are colorblind or I just, you know, I just think the more people at the table, the more, uh, the more we're thinking about, you have more voices adding to the conversation. And so I, I, I think it was, I think it was great. Austin. Uh, I think the question is not, was the event great or are we going to be collaborative? I, the way I understood the question is, how are we going to uh, work when we might have the perception that uh, some people might have the perception that they've made a comment, what happens to it? Um, it is a complicated process, uh, I think, for that reason as well. Uh, I regard the comments, the suggestions as recommendations. Their recommendations to the building committee. And the building committee is going to make recommendations to the town manager and the trustees. Uh, the, some of the comments are really interesting to me in the sense of I had not thought about them. They, they pointed things out that just completely escaped me. So if that's the view of the committee, then the committee will have a chance to kind of look at things with some fresh eyes. But at the end of the day, uh, what is done in the design of the library will be uh, a set of recommendations made through the building committee to the town manager and the, and the trustees. And members of the public are going to be invaluable in helping us think in new ways. And Alex, as you said, reinforcing some already existing dispositions. There are things in the comments, for example, the position of the Burnett Gallery. That's a significant design issue, and it has implications for lots of things. That's different from beanbag chairs uh, or a comment about whether the front entrance should be accessible. I believe there was one comment to that. So uh, I, I think we have a process. I don't know, Chris, we can't um, you know, know what people are going to think. We've been very clear about, I think we've been clear about what the process is. And we'll try to remain clear about what the process is. Uh, but I think seeing these comments opening new ideas um, and seeing these comments reinforcing some things and seeing these comments call our attention uh, to things, uh, that's, uh, that's why I think they're valuable. And I think they'll be valuable to the building committee. Thanks, Austin. Um, OK. Um, so. Do we, as a committee, want to send this spreadsheet up to the full building committee or to the design subcommittee, or was this just a fun exercise for me to type up? What like what are <laughs> thoughts on that? I I mean I personally like the way that Craig organized it because uh, for me, right, anything that was in program space was something that impacts how the schematic is drawn. And so to me, the design subcommittee could quickly filter through, you know, the 200 comments and be like, okay, these things are immediate. And then, you know, again, it's not that the design subcommittee is, you know, changing the plans per se, but again, they're taking in community feedback and where it makes sense and where things can be adjusted. And, you know, I mean, this is a giant jigsaw puzzle of, how it all fits together. We can't just move a room because one room impacts all the other rooms. But I still, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it does make the, the I think it's valuable. So I, I liked that ability to be able to sort things and quickly get to, you know, beanbag chairs aren't a priority right now. It's great information to collect, but we know we can look at that later. Um, sustainability comments about, you know, cross lame and timber. That's a now decision, right? That's important too. So I, I liked the ability to sort the, by priority in terms of when when that public comment is pertinent to the process. So I think my only concern. Oh, Alex. Yeah. oh I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Alex. I think my only concern, I that makes all the logical sense to me. Um, and 
I also have a concern that uh, that sort of prioritization um, in a project where we just got a cost estimate where we're 20% over cost uh, runs, runs the risk of us getting to the bean bags and being in a tight position, right? And I don't, I don't mean to keep making this about bean bags, but I really like bean bags. Um, the, and so I just want to also be, I want to be intentional that like, if we are making decisions now about lumber, how do we also keep in mind um, that they will have ramifications on the, just the number of choices we will have when we get to the inside of the building? Does that make sense? Craig, you have any thoughts on that? Um, I wish I had um, sort of a, a, a really good um, response that say like, no, 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 we can have it all. But um, Xander is exactly right. Um, the decisions that we're making that the, the building committee is making up front now will certainly have an impact um, on what are available in the future, both cost wise as well as say, you know, spatial relationships. Um, one thing that I've been talking about with some of the various committees, I think the design subcommittee is the one that we, we spoke about at most at most length is um, yes, while the, the very preliminary budget that we've got now, for the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the preliminary construction cost estimate we have now is based on a lot of assumptions. And uh, it's my recommendation not to start removing things from the project until we get more clarity, more definition and a, a new cost estimate at the end of the schematic design phase, which is uh, in a couple months. So my, so sort of recap, I, I, I wish you weren't right, Xander, but you are. Decisions that are made now will have implications down the road, but nonetheless, they still need to be made. Well, and Craig, just to piggyback off that, I mean, one thing that further complicates that is so much of the um, most powerful or most actionable public commentary comes in the schematic design period. So if we're talking about not eliminating stuff until after the schematic design period is over, then it, it becomes very hard for us to respond and say, no, actually X, Y, and Z were extremely important. I mean, not us, but the community to respond and say, actually X, Y, and Z are important to us. Um, but now the schematic designs are there and that's the only way the jigsaw puzzle comes together and is 100% of the picture with 80% of the cost. Awesome. Um, thanks, Alex. I, I want to try to answer the, uh, the question that you asked earlier. I, I think there's no design subcommittee meeting between now and next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we're having a building committee meeting. I believe that what should happen next is the results of the May 1st event should be shared with the building committee. The building committee should be invited to have a, a discussion, uh, a first discussion Gee, that was interesting. Gee, I, that was surprising to me. Gee, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, and the building committee can, if you will, refer it to the design committee, informed by the discussion of the building committee. I don't know that uh, we should be spending lots of energy now trying to talk about what's going to happen with the cost or, or the that's a very important question. I think what we should be spending energy on now is thinking about outreach. So what are our next steps with um, outreach and make sure that we have our, our, our plan, it's, it's, still, it's, it's still in place. Um, that's what I would see as, the, as our work, at least for the moment. Uh, send the, the results to the, to the whole committee. Let's have a conversation. The whole committee may say, look, design committee, you need to chew on those things. And you, Alex, then informing the committee, look, here's our next public outreach event. Here's what we're going to do. So that's what I would myself think uh, should be the process going forward from this committee, the design committee, and what we should be doing as a outreach subcommittee. Great. So to my original question, what I'm hearing is that 
this spreadsheet were cool with that being the vehicle with which I send it to the Jones Library Building Committee? That was really my question. <laughs> I'm gonna utilize the spreadsheet that Craig suggested if everybody's on board with that. And then I will do just as Austin said. Hearing no objection, I'm gonna do that. So Craig, you have to leave, yes? Which is great, because we're actually, that's a good segue into our uh, item number four, which is planning our next event. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for joining us, Craig. Appreciate of it. Bye-bye. So um, we have uh, the schematic design. Uh, the designers are beginning schema beginning the finalization of schematic designs on May 9th, and that's uh, going through July 1st. Um, so we have eight weeks um, more, essentially. Um, there'll be community outreach after that, but this sort of initial press is, is eight weeks. Um, and then after that, we move into, you know, color selections, interior materials and different things. So um, we had talked before about the town um, is working with the newly formed CRESS, um, Community Responder Equity Safety um, Group at, on community engagement, specifically in the apartment complexes. So there are two currently scheduled, one for May 22nd, which is a Sunday in two weeks at Olympia Oaks. And they'll also be including um, people who live in Butternut, and then one on June 11th, which is a Saturday, two weeks following that first one, and that's gonna be in Village Park. So we are invited to that event to have a table to take the show on the road. Um, so one, we need to figure out what taking the show on the road looks like. Um, and then also just wanted to chat about, you know, are those two events out in the community enough, or are we hoping to have more than that, I mean, we have this really tight time frame. So, and and if more, where might they be? So, I don't know if folks have thoughts or comments about that. No, no comments. No thoughts. Yes, awesome. So that sounds terrific. Um, I, I wonder whether, and I, uh, I don't know enough to make the suggestion. So these are just thoughts, ideas. Uh, is there an event that could be held at the survival center that would be uh, useful to us? Is there a desire to have an event for the senior community in town, uh, whether it's at the Bangs or at the um applewood uh is there some way to uh, work so that uh, we could um use uh the the markets on saturday uh so those are just some thoughts about other things that we might want to do great alex any thoughts yeah, a, um, Austin's comments, I think, really have me thinking of like, uh, or the combination of both of y'all's comments really, um, have me thinking about how, how do we make this possible to be on the road so that uh, the survival center could actually do this, right? Like, um, how do we empower other groups to have a conversation about their drones with their own constituents or communities um, in a way that they can bring back similar results, right? Um, but are able to have that conversation themselves, right? And so I, I think there is one need for us to figure out how do we go on the road to an event like the 22nd? Because yes, that sounds great. Um, I think there's also another thing of like, are there organizations that would be interested in having a conversation about the Jones and working with us to, to put that on or to, to run it themselves, right? Great, thanks. Yeah, so I, right, so, okay, good. Um, do, yeah, so I guess the big thing is gonna be just coming up with a format of that. So I guess I can work with folks at the library or possibly pull together some of the people who volunteered at the event and sort of brainstorm some ideas um, because the next one would be in two weeks. <laughs> so um, 
figuring out and and it might just be as simple as you know taking what's up in the library right now which shows other people's you know they're sort of smaller boards of the different tables and people's comments already and and you know making that more portable perhaps so um okay i can follow up on that well and Alex, um, i would also say um with the amazing number of volunteers that we had i would be very interested to go back to them and sort of debrief like how did you feel the first when what how would you feel the next like how would you make the next event happen um because i think there was so much shared ownership in the jones on the first uh that continuing to share that ownership will will continue that yeah absolutely i agree okay um so um in terms of advertising for the next events i mean all of the things that we're talking about sort of have sort of built in advertising, whether it's survival center, senior center, farmer's market. So I think that'll be different than what we've done, but sort of naturally lends itself to who we're trying to reach. So unless someone wants to add to that. Um, so another item, which is interesting that I'm gonna propose is that um, in working with the community participation officers of the town, um, the town has a team at UMass that they're working with. Um, and they work with in-meeting participation tools. Um, so the idea is that, you know, if we had a, a, a tool right now, everybody who's in our audience would have the ability to sort of, you know, weigh in in terms of what they're thinking. Um, and what I was thinking about was in the design subcommittee meetings, um, would it make sense potentially to use these participation tools so that as the design committee is discussing things the people in the meeting can weigh in and again setting up expectations is important right people are weighing in and you know if you've got 10 people in the meeting that's certainly not the entire town it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make a decision based on what those 10 people are saying but it's just a potential way given this tighter time frame to have the community be engaged in the conversations around design um, I don't 100% know exactly how it works. I know that it's been used by the town. I know the town's trying to push it as a participation model. If there's interest, um, I can meet with the group, find out more, and then have them present at our May 10th meeting to sort of talk about what's possible if folks think that's a good idea. You're muted, Austin. But I don't. I don't fully understand it, but I'm happy to hear more about it. Okay, I, I, the other thing, Alex, is um, uh, we might want to do a couple of events uh, of this kind, namely virtual events. Now, okay. not everybody has access to the computers, and that, that's certainly true. But why not take advantage of this kind of technology announce a couple of meetings uh, on online at times that are better than this one for 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 folks and add that to the mix of ways of gathering uh, public comments great sounds good um and then one last thing i just wanted to make note um this saturday may 7th um Jen Moisten, who's a community participation officer, um, just wanted to let us know that um, Julius Ford Harriet Tubman Healthy Living Community in partnership with the Human Rights Commission has a Healthy Living Community Festival uh, from 12 o'clock to five o'clock at Mill River. The suggestion was not that we table there because this is a very, uh, this is an event meant for a very certain uh, thing, but that it might be a great place to um, come as community members and engage with other community members just as neighbors talking to neighbors about the library. So I'm just putting that out there for anybody who's on the meeting. It sounds like a really fabulous event, music, food, games, art, poetry. It's, it's, it sounds, sounds fabulous. So anybody who doesn't know about the event, it is an event and that was a suggestion made to us. Um, gonna open it back up for public comment. If anybody has anything they want to share out in the public. Sorry, Alex, is it okay for me yep. to throw one thing in before we just move on? Please. Sorry. Um, 
I, uh, one thing that I think would be really helpful is when we go to the big group meeting, um, when we are talking as a committee, is for us to also think about what it, when is gonna be like the last big time and the last big event before um, we finalize the schematic designs. And partially what I'm thinking is that as we do all of these uh, neighborhood and partner events and whatnot, how do we also advertise that like, well, and in the future, there's going to be this thing before we finalize that. And we wanna get as many people together so that these, uh, these smaller site events then are also funneling energy back towards a bigger event to try and get people talking to each other as well. Yeah, and I think this sort of, tricky bit is you know because of covid because of the lawsuit that was filed against the town you know because of you know the town council ultimately deciding to put this to a vote the reality of all of that is that we are two years later than we would have been which is driving costs right so those those variables are driving up the cost of the project um and so this eight week period that we're in right now, we are simultaneously gathering community feedback while they're drafting the schematic designs. So the end date of July 1 is when they're hoping to have schematic design finalized. So I'm not sure. So for me, that's why I'm in this sort of push to do as much as I can and in, as much as we can in the eight weeks and just constantly be funneling information that's informing that process. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, uh, so essentially if we told everyone show up July 4th for a gallery walk through the comments, um, we would already be three days late. Yes. Great. <laughs> so I'm, so I, so we're keeping the comments posted at the library and we can certainly keep them posted online and updated real time. We can also, use uh, the Engage Amherst website um, to keep comments coming in over these eight weeks. Um, so I'm, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I'm really trying to sort of get us creatively thinking about is we're sort of, we're, we're working side by side, right? It, yeah, because, of, because the initial comments were gathered back, you know, when this process started. And so this is a, a check-in. Like we're just keeping it moving along. So, okay. Anything, Austin? Do you have anything else that you want to? Yeah, good. Okay. Um, do we want to have our next meeting on May seventeenth, which would put us back on the opposite Tuesdays of the Jones Library Building Committee meetings? Do we think we need to meet sooner? Is that? Opposite, opposite Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah. So that would put us to that. Our next meeting would be May 17th. Okay. Um, good, okay. Any Anything I've missed or that you wanna comment on or add to? Oh, sorry, I cut you off for public participation. That's okay. I'm just gonna check back in with uh, the participants and see if anybody would like to Add any suggestions, comments, feedbacks about the event, anything at all. This is a public outreach group. So anything anybody wants to contribute would be welcome. Okay, that's no hands. Great. Okay, uh, there are no topics not anticipated by the chair. So with that, uh, I'm gonna call the meeting to adjournment at 446. Thank you, members of the public who participated. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Austin. And I'll see you on May 10th.